Well, good morning. It's now the first week of October. And have we been so blessed with this beautiful fall weather that we've been receiving? So grateful that, uh, you know, we're way above uh, temperature norms for this time of the year and we're approaching uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, it's just coming up uh, this weekend. Today we uh, have the memorial of St. Francis of Assisi, which I will talk about as we go along. And uh, of course we're also hearing from the Gospel of St. Luke as uh, Jesus is uh, continuing his mission into Jerusalem. So let us begin, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you, and with your spirit. Francis, the man of God, left his home behind, abandoned his inheritance, and became poor, penniless, but the Lord raised him up. And as we, you know, always begin to pray, we want to offer all those wrongdoings that uh, sit in our conscience and on our hearts, knowing that uh, God does understand and forgive. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. And you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. So let us uh, start uh, with uh, uh, praising our Lord. I'm just trying to find the hymn that I want to play to everybody. Uh, holy, holy, holy. Uh, of course, right there it is. Uh, holy, holy.
a nice hymn to get us off today to the right start and and uh, as we begin to pray oh God whose by gift of st. Francis was confirmed to Christ in poverty and humility grant that by walking in st. Francis's footsteps we may follow your son and through joyful charity come to be united with you and I'm just gonna pull up a picture of st. Francis and of course every uh, everybody prays to St. Francis, uh, you know, uh, certainly for the poor, and many pray to St. Francis if we sometimes lose something too. But here we see Francis uh, sitting in a garden uh, looking towards heaven. And he was born in 1118, or 1181, and he came from a very wealthy family. And uh, he lived a comfort of uh, a life of, very, of a lot of comfort and pleasure. He was a, a soldier, and when he was a soldier, he was taken uh, prisoner. And uh, after that, uh, you know, he realized how fortunate of a life that he had. And it's in 1206, uh, he felt a call to repair God's house. Following the command, literally, he, uh, his, his father disinherited him uh, because he didn't agree with him. And you know, he eventually uh, won the zeal of the disciples and was given approval to start an order. Um, and it was, of course, the Franciscan order, which is still very uh, relevant and prominent today. And uh, uh, in fact, we have a young man from our community who is now uh, going a friar and is studying, uh, you know, th through the Franciscan uh, University in Ireland. Franciscan died in 1226 and was canonized later that year. And he's the patron saint of, of Italy, of course, uh, but of teachings. And uh, there's so much to, uh, that, you know, we, we could learn from St. Francis. And uh, the symbols that he used, uh, um, the outer world as an inner significance must come together to be there uh, by holy by wholeness and holiness. Francis held many opposites together in himself, uh, a unique wholeness. Francis had a unique wholeness. He was once very traditional and entirely knew the ways of holiness, and he is still such a standing patriarch. He stood barefoot on the earth and yet touched the heavens. He was grounded in the church and yet instinctively moved towards uh, the cosmos. Uh, we might uh, even say that uh, he was mystic in a sense. And he lived happily inside the visible and yet both suffered and rejoiced what others thought was invisible. And uh, you know, he was a very, very special man, and uh, a lot of people have taken his name as Francis. We have uh, our Pope as Pope Francis, uh, you know, following the model of uh, St. Francis of Assisi, and our local uh, Archbishop, his name is also Francis. So during a Mass, when we are consecrating uh, the Eucharist, uh, both names are, are mentioned, but it's a hidden ex expense, really. It would be, we're all disciples of Jesus, um, boast that he will, we follow the Lord in any way. Whatever the sacrifice, Jesus' response makes us wonder and whether uh, we really are fully following our Lord. It's not easy. It's not glamorous. But when we look at St. Francis, you know, he chose to be poor and help the poor. And, uh, you know, we, went, we go through life with high expectations and yet, uh, you know, we have, we, we have high hopes and learns as a child uh, that we want to excel in whatever we do. And this is what we've got to take and carry on with, with our family ties. And Christ tries to dissuade uh, in our readings, our gospel reading today, 
you know, the disciples uh, were traveling and, and they were in a community that uh, they weren't very welcomed. And Jesus said, I will follow. <clears throat> the disciples, of course, said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. And, you know, he uses a, a parable. Foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Let the dead bury their own dead, but as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And then another disciple said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. And Jesus said, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back as fit for the kingdom of God. So I think what our readings are saying uh, today from Luke is we have to let go of some of our, our uh, humanism, some of our uh, family ties, and, and follow if we're going to follow Christ and be a good Christian, we have to let go of them. And, uh, uh, you know, we will weed out uh, things in our life that uh, shouldn't be there. And that, of course, is sin when we get in trouble. Uh, knowing that uh, uh, our Lord is always there. And Francis is an example for that. He, he was very modest. And that's why when you see a Franciscan, they wear a, a brown um, uh, stole, if you want to call it, and a hoodie. And, and it's the full length, uh, you know, to, to signify that they, that's all the clothes that they really need or have. So this week, let's try to uh, be like St. Francis, uh, help those that are less fortunate than us, uh, talk to those that uh, maybe you haven't uh, spoken to in a while. And of course, we're also so appreciative of uh, all the blessings we have. Certainly this gorgeous weather has just been unbelievable. And, uh, you know, we pray for an abundance of the harvest this fall, especially coming up to Thanksgiving. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And let's pray for our families, those we miss, those we love and think about often. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And let's also pray for anybody that's sick, you know, that uh, we think about and, and worry about as, long, as well as those that have uh, passed and, and their earthly life. We pray to the Lord, uh, Lord, hear our prayer. So let's go to uh, him and... Uh, we haven't heard this hymn, but I think everybody likes it. On Eagle's Wings. Shut up. 
beautiful day and hold us in the palm of his hand and that's where we are today as we you know continue our journey and uh, open our hearts to uh, receive our Lord spiritually today as we um, prepare to do that uh, through spiritual communion as we now uh, say the prayer that our Savior gave us our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always safe from all distress, as we wait for the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. And now this is the opportunity that I extend uh, as a peace be with you and and you can share that with your neighbor and uh, just acknowledge with a smile or a handshake. Uh, so the peace of the Lord be always with you. And now let's, uh, as we prepare to receive uh, communion spiritually, we'll just go to uh, Lamb of God and, and uh, prepare that as I Spiritually, I will pull up our prayer here as soon as I find it. Uh, um, there we go. Here we go. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And of course, now we'll uh, go to our faith, hope, and charity prayer. 
Loving God, we pray that as a Christian faith community, we continue to be witnesses to Jesus Christ's virtues of faith, hope, and charity. May we be people of faith, always willing to follow the example of Jesus in all that we do. May we be people of hope, always trusting in your loving presence in our lives. May we be people of charity, always willing to give of ourselves to better the lives of others. Together, may we be a community of faith anchored in hope with heart and charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so now let us go to uh, another hymn, uh, maybe one that uh, is... Uh, You know, it's part of St. Francis uh, of Assisi, make me a channel of your peace. Now uh, there we are. who fear you. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are they who are perse persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Renew by this bread from the heavenly table, that's our spiritual communion, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us throw ourselves into the ocean of his goodness. Wherever failing will be can with every failing will be cancelled, anxiety turned into love. And so as we now come to a conclusion, uh, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. And may the Lord's face continue to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So go in peace, my friends, and uh, have a wonderful week, and enjoy this beautiful weather. And I guess as we close, we'll sing uh, uh, another hymn that I think everybody likes. Uh, uh, Got the whole world in your hands.
So until next week, God bless everyone. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me, sister, in his hands. He's got you and me, brother, in his hands. He's got you and me, sister. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the little tiny baby. In his hands, he's got the little tiny baby. In his hands, he's got the little tiny baby. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got all of us here. In his hands, he's got all of us here. In his hands, he's got all of us here. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. That's it till next week. God bless everyone.